the Holy Land, of course, is the land where the state of Israel is now located. And uh, the Quran refers to that land as Al Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land. And so we prefer to remain with the name given to the land by Allah Himself, the Quran, in the Quran. And here is the verse where the word Holy Land occurs. It is in a, a Surah Al Ma'idah, the fifth Surah of the Quran. And in this Surah of the chapter, it is Nabi Musa, Islam, the Prophet Moses, who addresses the Israelite people and he says to them, Ba'da'uzu billahi min the shaitan the rajim, Ya qawmi al-khulul ard al-muqaddasat al-lati katab Allahu lakum. Let me repeat that. Ya qawmi al-khulul ard al-muqaddasat al-lati katab Allahu lakum. Ba'da'uzu billahi min the shaitan the rajim. O oh, my people, he's referring, he's addressing the Israelite people, Banu Israel. Come on and enter the Holy Land, which Allah has written for you. This is a verse of the Quran, which is ayah muhkama, plain and clear as daylight. No need for any interpretation that the Lord God has said, I have given this land to the Israelite people. Subsequent to the attempt to crucify the Messiah, Jesus, the son of the Virgin Mary, Allah's blessings be upon him, both. The Quran no longer uses the term Israelite people, Banu Israel, because the Quran says some of them believed in him and others rejected him. Those who believed in the Messiah, and when they saw him crucified before their very eyes, they wept. The Quran refers to them as an Nasara, a people who help Allah. An Nasara, a people who help Allah, who say, Nahnu Ansar Allah, we are the people who have the cause of Allah. And they are otherwise known as Christians. But the Quran calls them a people who help Allah. And then those who rejected him, the Quran now refers to them as the al yahud or the Jews. And these two people collectively are known as Ahlul Kitab. And so Moses is addressing his people, the Israelite people, and saying to them that Allah Most High has given this land, this holy land to you. It belongs to you. So why is it that the state of Israel does not broadcast this? Seven days a week, <laughs> 24 hours a day. Why is it the New York Times and the Washington Post and the State Department? Why don't they broadcast this verse of the Quran throughout the world? Why? What's wrong with them? <laughs> Answer, they don't want that attention should ever be directed to the book of Allah. They don't want that. They're scared of the Quran. They're scared of the Quran. They're scared of the Quran. And so now we bring the Quran to you. To whom does the land belong? Does it belong to the Jews? Or does it belong to the Christians? Or is it that, does it belong to the Muslims? Let us answer that question from the Quran. The Quran says the land was given to the Israelite people. The Quran also says that Allah has placed blessings in this land for all of mankind, for all of mankind. So now then, if the land was given to the Jews, was it given unconditionally? Was this a bestower of land unto eternity? You can do what you want, you can study, you can believe in the Lord God or you can be 
atheist that are in this city of ours. You can be righteous in conduct, you can be wicked in conduct, you'll be an oppressor, the land is still yours. Is there anyone so foolish to accept that load of rubbish? Well, that's exactly what has happened. Allah has said in the Quran that this land is given to those of his servants who are righteous in conduct. I think this is Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah number 21. So there, it is a conditional gift of the land to the Jews, conditional on righteous conduct, and of course having faith in the one God. And uh, the Proof that this was the kind of bestowal that's given, conditional and righteous conduct, that the Quran now speaks at the beginning of Surah Al Isra, and he says, every time that the Israelite people violated that covenant with him, violated the conditions of inheritance of the Holy Land, Allah Most High threw them out of the land, threw them out of the land because of their violation of the conditions of inheritance of that land, righteous conduct. But the last time they were thrown out of the land, this is what the Quran said, that if you return with your sinful conduct, I will return with my punishment. This is the last word. Or in autumn, odna. So yes, the answer is the land was given to them, but it was not given unconditionally. But someone decided to change the Torah and to put into the Torah this verse that is manifestly false. It is not because of righteousness that the Lord God has given you this good land to inherit it. For you are a stiff-necked people, meaning whether you are righteous or sinful, the land is still yours. That is what the Torah now says, and that is false. And so now we have a situation in which the Jews have returned to the Holy Land, have recovered it and reclaimed it as their own, and are engaged in monstrous oppression. The whole world can recognize that oppression except the United States of America and Canada and France and Germany and Spain and Italy and Australia. <laughs> These are the people who cannot recognize the oppression. Modern Western civilization, all the rest of mankind can recognize that now they have returned to the Holy Land and they're committing monstrous oppression in the Holy Land. And so the conclusion from the Quran is since you have returned with your oppression and wicked conduct, the Lord God is going to return with his punishment. So it's not the Security Council of the United Nations which is going to resolve this problem. It's not Russia is going to be able to mediate between the Palestinians and Israel to solve this problem. Because the Quran has declared, if you return to this holy land with your sinful conduct, with your facade on earth, your corruption and destruction of the land, I will return with my punishment. And so it is time for the world to turn to the Quran to understand the destiny of the holy land. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.